<clears throat> All right, good morning. There's nobody on with me right now. Uh, Grant usually jumps in right when class starts, but if he doesn't, that's not a problem. Uh, today is, I am taping, <laughs> today is Wednesday, the 1st of March. We will finish up with our bootstrap um, project that we've been working on today. And afterwards, I do have the test that I sent out to you this morning. I want to go over that with you. Tomorrow and Friday are both lab days. There'll be no taping. I will be online both days. But um, again, you will be, you know, just working on the test. And the test will be due a week from today. All right. Normally, I have things due on on a Sunday, but I don't this week. So really, you have nothing new that's due Sunday. Rather, your test will be due a week from today on the 8th. Now, on Monday, we will start the or begin the JavaScript portion of the class. So what we are going to attempt to do today is finish up this project, and I want you to see what it should look like when we get done. All right, this is what we did yesterday, and this is what we're going to add today. All right. All right, so we're going to add all that. Now, it looks like a lot, but it really isn't going to, I don't believe, take all that much time. All right, so what I'm going to do, and I'm going to keep that one up there. All right, and I'm going to go back to what I've been working on, the ePortfolio folder. And let's bring that up. And as you can see, that right now. All right, now there's a couple things that I want to mention as we start. All right, first of all, uh, I got these to, to be white like we wanted them to. So let's look at that to begin with. All right, so let's bring this up. And I want to make sure I've got the right file up and not the wrong one. Yep, this is our ePortfolio, good. So as we take a look in here, this is what I had to do and let me word wrap. All right. So to get this to be white like I wanted to, I put uh, nav class equal nav bar, nav bar expand large, BG primary, that turned it blue, then nav bar dark, text white. I may or may not even need that nav bar dark. I don't remember, but I'm going to leave it there because this works. All right. And again, the idea is what we want is when we click on the brand, we want it to go back to the home page, so we're not having it go anywhere. So that was the first thing. The second thing I wanted to mention is that I screwed up yesterday. I'm sure it wasn't the first time, but when we take a look in here, I want to just I want to go down to here for now, and I'm going to jump back up in a minute. For some goofy reason yesterday, what I did was I had the button in here, and then I tried to put my a tag inside of it. No, I should have done it like this. Again, I will save this whole thing when I get done today. <clears throat> but what I wanted was the A tag that I wanted to add a class of button onto it to make it look like a button. All right, so you will notice that right now when you click that A tag, it should open up my resume in a new window. And that A tag should look like a button it should be blue and large, and it should say on it, see my resume. And what you'll notice is if we do take a look, that's exactly what it is right there. And when I click on it, it does indeed open my resume. Okay, all right. So with that all said, the other thing I wanted to mention is I changed these links. All right, this is the about, and that takes me right there. There's the AWD 1000, which is going to take me right here. We don't have the why me yet. I'm going to do that in a moment. The portfolio yet. We don't have the contact yet. All right. So it, this is partially working. OK, I mean, everything we've done so far is working. I do want to mention since I jacked around a little bit here with the uh, margin and stuff it may look a little bit funky when we get done we'll see all right so again we've got the about done that's right here we've got the awd 1000 done that's right here all right so the next thing to do according to this 
is this why me? All right. And what I'm going to do for the <clears throat> what I'm going to do for the why me just to show you this and try to make this as simple as possible is I'm going to go out to get bootstrap. Dot com. Let me make sure I threw my sound up. I had it down a little earlier. All right, so let's see, what is this? I have no idea what this is. Get rid of that. Okay, let me try that again. So I'm going to go out to getbootstrap.com. Okay, and in here under the docs, I want to find um, the accordion. I wish I was better at knowing where everything in here is, but I'm just not. There it is under components. And the one I like to use, it's the same one that Traversy used. It's the accordion flush. All right. And I'm just going to grab all of the, everything that's here. I'm going to copy it to the clipboard. All right. But before I paste that in, which I'm going to do in just a moment. All right. So there was my, you know, again, I've tried to put some comments in here so you can see what's going on. So there was my nav bar section start, my nav bar section end, my hero or showcase start, my hero or showcase end, my AWD section start, my AWD section end. So let's continue on with that. So this will be, this will be my, um, not really, well, why me section start. All right, and then a little later, we'll have our why me section end, okay? And what that means is there's going to be a section here, okay? So. But those sections, I'm trying to put it, you know, make these look a little bit the same. So this is going to be class equal P5 and then the ID. So class equals P-5, which means five paddings all the way around. All right. And ID equals Y me. Okay. And then I'm going to go and just paste that entire accordion in there. Now I want to change it around. And what I mean is, you know, they've got what three three things in there. I had three things in there. But let me go in just so you don't have to watch me type. And let me go into the one that is finished. And let me just grab my accordion stuff from in there. I'm not, you know, keeping you from anything. I'm not not showing you anything. But these are these are my statistics, so to speak. I think that's everything, right? Yes, it is. So I'm going to replace what we got with our accordion because it's generic text that's in there. So I'm going to replace it with my own text. All right, hopefully what I just said made at least a little bit of sense to you. <clears throat> so let me grab all this. Again, this is everything, and I'm going to paste in my stuff, but be, I want to do one more thing in here as well. And that is at the top of this section, so right underneath my container, oh, I've already got it. All right, why? Okay, so let me save this, and then we'll take a look at it. So let's look at it. So we've just added this. Now, I'm not going to do a whole heck of a lot in here as far as formatting and the like, just so you know that. All right. But this is my educational background. All right. This is my teaching background. And this is my programming and other experience background. 
All right, now one thing I don't like about the way this looks right now is I've got white followed by white. I want the background here to be dark. And I want to show you something. If I go in and I want to be able to want you to be able to understand this. All right, the container is basically a thing inside of here that what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in something that's wrong. I'm going to put in BG dark there. That's what I want, but I actually want to add it to the section. But I'm going to purposely mistakenly add it here. Why? Because I want you to see what happens. See how not everything here is now black? Just the section itself is black. But watch the difference between doing that and then taking this BG dark and adding it up here. All right, that's where it's supposed to be. So file, save all, and now look at it. That's what I wanted. Now I could center this, I can bold this text, et cetera. You know, that's all fine, okay? But I'm just gonna, for now at least, I'm gonna leave it the way it is. Now, there should be something up here that says, why hire me? But I believe it's not white, all right? It, it's probably black, so it's black text on a black background. So let's fix that next. Then we'll go back and we'll talk about everything that's in here. So I want to come in here and say text white. All right. And I'm just going to say FW. I think it's FW bold like that. I don't remember, to be honest with you. And that's for font weight bold. All right. And let's let's go and do the same thing here. So I'm going to come in here and let's see. Uh, in these, all these LIs, uh, maybe if I, if I do it in the UL, will that be enough? I don't know. Class equal, and I'm gonna put font weight bold like that. All right, and let me save. We run this again. There's the why hire me. And now everything that's in here, whoop, that one's bolded. All right, but they're not all bolded, okay. Not sure why the first one would have bolded and not all of them, but we'll fix it right now. All right, so I've got it in the UL, and for whatever reason, it didn't seem to like that. So I'm going to put it in here. This is, seems to me like it's overkill to do it like this, but... Oh, you know what? It was correct where it was. I should have it right here in the UL because each one of these is a is a is its own UL. So let me fix that. Let me go down to the UL that's down here and fix that. And let me go down to the URL that's down here and fix that. Now when I do a file save all and I go back and look now everything in here should be bolded. That's bolded. That's bolded and that's bolded. All right, so what an accordion does basically, and we're going to look at accordions again when we get into the JavaScript part of the class, but what accordions basically do is they allow you to temporarily show text and then remove it. All right. And again, I could play with this. I could center these things. I, I'm just going to leave it the way it is right now. All right, I mean, if you really want, you can come in there and run the text center on this stuff, and then it'll probably look a little nicer. I don't know. All right, I think it looks okay the way that it is. Now, what I want to see is now if I go to the why me, now it's jumping down there. Good. All right, so let's take a look at the actual code that did this, and we'll just look at one of them because all three are the same. Just the content inside is different. So again, we've got a class that's a container. We've got our H2 with our white text that says, why hire me? And then we've got our accordion. And again, all I did was I used their, their stuff. So for instance, where they've got the ID equals flush heading one, and they'll have a flush heading two and a flush collapse one, we could have always gone in there and renamed all those. All right, but this is working very similarly to the hamburger menu, all right? We're telling it to collapse, and we're telling it our target is collapse one, 
All right, and we're doing a little bit in here. We're doing a little bit of uh, accessibility stuff. OK, and then this is the title right here. Educational background, so that's the title that you see. All right, and then these are the contents. We've got the unordered list and it's got my these are my degrees, so I've got a BA. I've got an AAS. And I've got an MS. All right, and when you look right there and we look at in here, so educational background and then there is the three things. All right, and if we look at the next one that's in here, it's set up the same way, except it's collapse two and flush heading two. That's my teaching background. All right, so that's what you see when the accordion is closed. And these are my three things of teaching. Seven years at Rankin, 23 and a half years at Blackhawk, three and a half years at Mid-State. And then finally, you see the last one that's in here. So this is the last thing in the closed accordion, programming and other experience. All right, I spent three and a half years as a programmer for Bell Laboratories, a year as a programmer analyst for Woodward Governor, and I was a reporter for three years. All right, so what that has done then is it's added help helped us add in the next thing that we wanted to put in there. So in other words, you know, and you've seen this before, but I want to show you, but when we look at our completed project now, so when I go back here to the completed project, so this is where we are in here right now. Oops. That's where we are right now. Okay. And I've got two of these open. Let me just close one. This is where we want to be is here. So we've got this, we've got this, and we've got this. So what's left are these portfolio samples. All right. And this drop me a line and then our footer at the bottom. So there's three more things we want to add. We want to add our portfolio section. We want to add our portfolio section. And that's again going to be this stuff. Then we want to add our contact form. And then finally, we want to come in and we want to add our footer at the bottom. And that's it. All right. So add one, two, three, four of our parts done. And we've got one, two, three parts left. So let's do that next. And again, because I'm trying to get a little bit of play of uh, similarity or whatever you want to call it between these. I'm going to come back up and I'm going to add a new section in just a second. And I want to make sure that it's got the same kind of thing in there. Now that section should be called. We've done we've done the about the AWD. So we did the about the AWD 1100, the YME. So this next one will be portfolio. All right, so let me go all the way down near the bottom. So I'm almost at the bottom right there. And now this, let me move this over, is not going to be the why me. This is going to be the portfolio. Section start and the portfolio. Section end. All right, so I've got this, and this is going to again be portfolio. All right, and then we will end our section here. Oops. Okay, now there's a bunch of stuff we want to put in here. All right, and we're going to put that in in just a moment. Okay. The first thing that we'll do, and this won't take too long, and in fact, to try to try to kind of hurry it up, for lack of better words, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here in just a moment. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add, um, I'm going to add, copy in the, uh, the, some of the cards that we did above. So you don't have to watch me do a whole bunch of copy and paste. All right, but let's come in and do what we always do, and that is we want to div with a class that's equal to container. All right. 
then we'll put it in H2 as we have been doing. And the class is going to be equal to, now this one, for this one, we've got BG dark. All right. And let's see. So right now, look in here. This is the one we just did. So we want this to be BG light. So let me change that first of all, because I might forget to otherwise. So that'll be BG light. And we'll make sure, so we'll say text dark. All right. In this H2 class right here, this will just say portfolio samples. All right. And then in here, we basically want to do the same kind of stuff that we did before with the rows and columns. <clears throat> with the rows and columns, the same type of stuff that we did before. All right. Now, again, to try to make it go a little faster, I'm going to go and do some copy and paste in here. First of all, in my images, here are the images that I used, and there is an ASP.NET. There is a C Sharp, a JavaScript, and this React one. So I'm going to copy these. I'm going to go over to my portfolio images, and I've got them in here, but they're bigger size. I cut them down, so I'm going to do a paste here, and I'm going to say I want to replace what was in there. Okay, so I've got my files that I need in there. There is the ASP.NET one. I don't need this anymore. I don't need this anymore or this or this. I'm just removing the stuff that's unnecessary. All right, so let me get, go back into here into my bootstrap, the one that's working. And again, this is all of the portfolio stuff, so we will grab it, put it in there, and then take a look at it, all right? All right, first let's take a quick look and make sure I didn't screw anything up. So we're over here now, and there's our as well. All right, but I've got dark here, then light, then dark, and I'm going to light again. Again, you can change this around. If you want to use different colors, use the primary, the secondary, etc. That's not a big thing one way or the other. All right. Now, what I've done here is I brought in screenshots of four of the projects that I've created over time. This is an ASP.NET FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions app. This is a JavaScript bootstrap app. This is a C Sharp photo app, and this is a React movie app. All right, and you can see all of those, okay? And it's not perfect. It doesn't look bad though. And I did try to set it up so everything would pretty much line up with one another. All right, is it, it, is it mandatory that you do that? The answer is no but yet it does look a little bit nicer when you do it like that. So let's check two things out before we go over the code here. First of all, let's go to portfolio and I am jumping down here. Oh, this, I should have had my text here and I want that text to be dark now. And I think it was light that said portfolio samples. We'll fix that. All right, and second, is it still responsive? And it looks like it is. All right, I think it's looking pretty nice on a small screen or a large screen, okay? So first let's go back into here and where I've got the uh, t -t 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 the H2 portfolio samples. Okay, I don't know why I said class equal portfolio samples. Shouldn't say that. It should say class equal BG, not BG, uh, text, white and then we'll say font weight bold and now it should say portfolio samples 
All right, so file save all. Let's take a look at that. And there's the why hire me. Now, why isn't it saying portfolio samples? Because the text should be dark and I made it light. That should be text. Um, let's just see text dark and see if it takes that. OK, there it is, and I didn't center it, so I'll do that right now with a text center. And again, we can go and add. Um, bottom margin, et cetera, if you can do any of that stuff that you want to or feel that you need to or want to do. So now let's see. Oops. All right, so there it is. OK. And it's not looking bad. I think I am going to put a little bottom margin on here because I've got a little here. It looks like I've got a little here. So let's put an MB3 on there and see what that looks like. So margin bottom three. And you see there's a little bit of margin. OK, all right, so let's again, this is review, but this is the stuff that we did yesterday. So we are setting up cards. Remember with cards, we have a row. In which we have four cards by default. How do I know that? Well, we've got one row. And we've got a gap between each one, but inside of here, we've got one column, two columns. Three columns four columns, so they're all right there. All right, and what that is going to end up doing, okay, is basically it'll automatically, for lack of better verbiage, it'll be set up for us so that what it's going to end up doing is when we reach a certain break point, it'll go down from four cards to either three or two, and we'll look at that in a moment, and then go down to one and stack. All right, but this stuff is all the stuff that we looked at yesterday. In other words, we've got the div class equal row, and then we've got our columns. And we're saying here that we want this to run like this on medium and above. But as you've already seen, when it gets down, that medium is like 768 or something like that. All right, but when we go down below that, okay, what you're going to see, in fact, let's just do it like this. Let's spread it out and you'll notice it's four when it hits a certain point it goes down to three now you may not like that we could fix that too i, I suppose it'd be you know there'd be ways to fix that by putting in a few more uh requirements and then when we hit two it goes down when it's two and two and finally it goes down to one all right I'm not going to lie to you and say this is the hey, this is the best site that's ever been created, but it's coming along and it's not too bad the way that it is. All right, so again, we have taken our image there and we have set it up basically an H1 size. All right, again, I just copied this down from the last one and last time we used the bootstrap icons. Now we're actually actually using an image and that image originally was about. Um, I. 500 by 500 each one of these images and I cut them down to 200 by 200 because I like the way they looked better. All right, and these are not going anywhere, so I would probably want to come in here and find the uh, GitHub repo. All right, and put that address in there, but right now if you click on them, nothing happens. So again, we have now come in. And we have created our nav bar followed by our showcase section, followed by a section on our class, followed by a why hire me, which had an accordion, and then we put in our portfolio samples. So what should be next in here then, according to this, is coming in and setting up a, uh, coming in and setting up a form. All right, so let's do that next. So again, I'm just gonna grab this, just these two lines right here. Oh, 
and down at the bottom. So after my portfolio section end, I'm going to come in here. And remember, this is what this is our contact section. So this will be contact section start. Then I will come in here and quickly, oops, end my section tag. And then underneath that, it will be contact section end. Okay. So right now, this will have to be an ID and this will have to be contact. All right. Now, let me show you what I did. Let me show you what I did. And then I will, um, after I do that, I do want this background here to be dark. And I want the text to be light. Okay. So when we come in here, look down here, we got the padding, etc. We've got all this other stuff. All right. And I want to put a form in here, but before I put in the form, I want to put it in an H2 tag because I've been doing that all along. And I'm going to say class equal text center. And text white. And we can do a font weight bold too if you want. All right. And in this H2 tag, I just said drop me a line. Okay. And then what I did was I again went back out to get bootstrap.com. Right. I went out to get bootstrap.com. Come on, there you are. And I look for forms. All right, and that is under forms. There you go. Overview, form control. And I grabbed the first one that was in here. Try that again with form control. This one. And I just made changes to it. All right, so what did I change? Well, first of all, I, made, I kind of made a copy of this all of this that's right here. And I put in up here name, and then this said full name. Then underneath that, I had email address and the email address. And underneath that, I had message and message. And then I put in a button. All right, so again, rather than you having to spend time watching me come in here and type, I'm gonna drop in what I've already done. Not really a lot in here, not really a lot. And as we have already gone over the chapter on forms, there really shouldn't be anything in here that's a surprise to you. All right, so here's our form. All right, there's our name input, okay? And again, this is all just stuff that was copied from the example. Let me move these over a couple and these over a tab. All right, so there's our label. Okay, and again, these are terrible names. They should have just said name. And this should have said name as well. All right, and that's of type text. Then for the next one, this should have said email. And it is type email, and the ID again can be email. All right, and then we had our message. Now this is different because it's a text area. So that is now message. As is that. All right, so I've got the text area in here. Finally, we added the submit button at the bottom. All right, I made it primary, so it's going to be bluish in color, and it just says send. It's not going anywhere. And let's see if I need to change anything or if it looks OK as it is. It's 
So there's there it is to drop me a line. Again, I could make this smaller. We could do all sorts of different stuff to this. I'm not concerned with that. But again, it should be responsive for us from the get go. And there it is. It looks OK. It, again, I, is it fantastic? It could look better. With not much work, we could make it look a lot nicer than it does right now. All right. But it doesn't look bad either. OK. All right. So the only thing that's left then is to come in and add our footer area. Let's manually put this one in because there's not much in here. All right. So let's see, let's come down to here. And we have just finished our contact section end. So let's come in here and say. Footer. Section start. And that will say. Footer. Section end. OK, and in between here will be our footer. Now I did give it some a, a, a few classes, so class equals. BG primary, because again, we wanted that to be the bluish like the uh, header was P3 for a little bit of padding. Text center. Text white. And font weight bold. All right. So there's our beginning and ending footer tags. And simply all I put in here was a paragraph. Oops. There. A paragraph. And the paragraph had in there ampersand copy 2023 by JP Scott Inc. All rights reserved. OK, let's take a look at that. And it's down here and something is goofed up, so let's fix it right away. All right, well, I can already tell Look, glass equal this. OK, I don't know what I did here, but somehow I lost my beginning footer. There we go. That should fix it. So let's see if it did. All right, so there's our footer at the bottom. 2023 by JP Scott Inc. All rights reserved. And can we jump around now? Let's go to the about. Okay, we went there. There's the AWD 1000. There's the why hire me. There's the portfolio samples. And there's the contact, drop me a line. Now, the reason that doesn't come up any higher is we just don't have anything down below that. Now, we could go in and we could add things in here. All right, and what I mean by add things in here, we could put something in here where we could have a go to top. All right, which might make some sense in here. In fact, let's just put in one of those. We'll put in one right here just so you see it. We'll put it in the footer section. Not probably the best place to put it, but it's OK. So let's see. Um, let's come in here and under the paragraph that we have, let's put in another paragraph. Off the top of my head and it's going to be an A. href equals pound sign top, which we have not created yet. We will in a second. And it'll say go to top of page. All right. And that'll be fine. Let's go back up to our very top where we've got the nav bar. Way up here at the top. Just about there. There we go. All right, we've got all that stuff in here, and I'm going to put in here ID equal top. And let's see if that works. So file save all. All right, we'll come back down to here. And there's our go to top of page 
and it does jump. I've got to fix this and make it white because otherwise it doesn't, you know, it looks pretty crummy. All right. So let me change the text on that and then we're just about finished. So where we've got the go to top, a href. So let's for that paragraph, we're going to say class equal text. Text white, I will not bold it. All right, so file, save all. It will have the underline here if you don't want. Oops, what is going on here? Still isn't showing it, so let's see what's going on there. White. Oh, we could try putting the class here. I didn't think, I thought it would work fine right there. There it is, go to the top of page and boom. And we could add those things. We could have one here that said go to top, one here that said go to top, one here and one here if we wanted to. I think this is sufficient as it is. So again, so I can jump. I think that's enough to be honest with you. All right, now let's do a couple things here and then we'll take a break. And quickly after the break, I'm going to do two things. And that is I'm going to show you first how to put this thing out to GitHub pages. And I've been watching a video. I meant to watch it before class, but I forgot all about it. So I've got to, I'll actually be watching a little bit of it during your break, I guess. So we will put this on GitHub pages and then I will go over your homework. All right. So before we do that, let's go back to here. And let me do a file, save all, or just save. All right, I really don't have anything in styles, but I'm going to leave that out there anyway. So here's my ePortfolio right there. All right, I've already got my GitHub stuff in there, but I'm going to do a git bash here. Oops. And do exactly what I did yesterday, and that is I'm going to do a git add dot. I don't have to do a git init. There already is a repository. And I'm going to do a git commit. I'll just put it here, final, E, final, bootstrap, bootstrap, five, E, portfolio. And today's date is 3, 1, 2023. All right, so let's do our git push. Everything else had already been set up, minus U, origin, master. And hopefully that's going to push everything out there. Well, it says that it is, but let's double check. And we will double check that by going out here. And I can close that one now and I can close this. And let's go out to GitHub. Let's search in here for ePortfolio. That's it from yesterday. And now, the images have been changed and the index file was changed. So it has been updated. All right. So again, what we have to do is two things. First of all, I have to give you these steps and I will do that and include it today, but I wanna watch the rest of this tape because I think I've got it all down, but I might be missing a step or two at the end. I'm gonna do that. And then we're going to go over tests that you're going to have to do for next Wednesday. So you're going to hear a little background noise. Now you're going to hear Brad Traversy talking for just a minute or two as I finish this thing up. But it is 8.50. I'm going to take. In fact, I'll let you watch it with me. I won't even take a break. Let's see. So this is Brad right here. OK. <coughs>
aquí. All right, we don't need to do that. That's if you have your own domain. So what I'm going to do is just add one more line here that says click the link. All right, so these are the steps. I'm going to give you this file. So let me do a file save all or save as, and I'm going to call this GitHub pages steps dot txt and there it is but i want to close this In fact where is it there it is right there and i'm going to open it up in a different editor so it's nice and big and now i'm going to just follow these steps all right so make a copy of the e-portfolio folder that's the first thing okay so there it is and I'm going to work with the original, but I now have a copy. So in case I screw up, here's my copy. And yeah, it's got everything in there. OK, so I've got a copy. That's good. All right, so that's the first thing. I don't want to work with a copy. I'm going to work with the original. So I've made a copy. Of my ePortfolio folder, then working with the original. What I want to do is in here, I want to make a new folder. And I want to call it dist, D-I-S-T, all right? And everything that I want to move over, which is my CSS folder, my images folder, my index.html file, and my PDF. So not the dist folder and not my git folder, all right? All the other ones, I want to take this and move this into dist, all right? So that's the second thing that we wanted to do. Notice what it says on here. Working with the original, create a folder named dist. It doesn't have to be dist. It could be build or something like that. Historically, you name it dist, all right? It's gonna be our, dist our distribu distribution model or whatever. So we moved everything else in there. Now, to do this next, this is different. So if you've never done this before, you're going to have to watch. And that is we want to go out to Node.js and install the latest long-term support version of Node. Now, I've already got Node on my system, so I'm going to remove it and reinstall it so you can see everything that has to be done here. It won't take much time. Node, Node is not a real big package, but I want to grab the one I have and remove it so you can see me go through everything that's in here. In fact, mine now is uh, several months old. So let me uninstall. Boom. And come on. There it is. All right. And this right here will be gone in just a minute as soon as that finishes its way. For whatever reason, my internet connection seems very slow this morning. OK, and now you can see that node is gone. So the next step, according to this, that we are supposed to do, let me get rid of that, is to go out to Node.js.org and install the latest version, which is called the LTS or long term support version. So I'm going to go out here. And I'm going to go out to Node.js.org. And this is it. This is the you are going to, to need this when we work uh, or when you know when you're taking the AWD 1111 class. For some of you, that'll be next semester in summer. For some of you, that'll be next fall. But all you have to do is click the button for LTS. LTS means long term support. The current one is in what's in what's called beta mode, which means that it it, it may possibly have bugs in it. The LTS one has been totally tested. So you click right there. 
and I'm going to right mouse click here and tell it to open it when it's done. It may beep at me and tell me that I need supervisory permission. It may not. Shouldn't really take that long because it's uh, again, it's a 74 meg package. So I'm just going to grab every default. Next, accept the license agreement. Next, put it right under program files. Next, keep everything in here that's selected. Next, uh, automatically install the necessary tools. I You don't need that, so just leave that off. Next, tell it to install. Click on there. And that's it. All right, so finish. That's it. So I can close this. I'm going to go back just so you see it. And now when you look in here again, I may have to refresh. But if I go back in here now, there's Node. All right, it's now, it was 74.2 meg, it's now 83.9, but it's version 18.14.2, which is the latest and greatest because it has today's date on it. So, done all that. So on my steps here, I have done number one. I made the copy of my ePortfolio folder. I did number two, where I was working with the original. I created the folder name, moved all the current ePortfolio contents into the disk folder. Now I've done number three, where I went out to Node.js and I installed the LTS version of Node. All right, now I'm on number four. I'm gonna do that, but to do that, I wanna work with this version that I'm using, I'm in my GitHub, my Git Bash here. So it says, open up a Git Bash here window. I already have that under ePortfolio. Key in node minus V, enter. All right, so node, this will show whether or not node was, was put on here. So if I say node minus V, and it comes back with V18.14.2, that means node was su successfully installed. When I install Node, I also install something that is called NPM, which is the Node Package Manager. So I can say NPM minus V, and I should get a number for that, 9.5.0. So now I've done this step here. So I verified. The next thing I want to do is I want to create what's called a package.json file. If absolutely none of this makes sense to you, don't let it bother you. And the reason that I'm telling you that, don't let it bother you, all right? The reason that I'm saying that is this is what the class that you will take either in summer or in fall is all about, all right? We want to create this package.json file. Now, if I type in npm init, it's going to come in and ask me to, to enter this value and this value, or if I wanted to just hit all of the defaults, hit enter, 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 enter about 10 times. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type in npm init minus y. And what that is going to do, I want you to see this. All right, I do want you to see this. So right now, if we look in our ePortfolio folder, this is what's in there. All right, we've got our dist where we moved all this stuff into, and we've got our dot git. All right. But now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to type in npm init minus y. And notice what's going to happen in here. It created a new file, file and it's, we're going to have to make changes to it in a moment. But it's a package.json file. That's the file that we're going to need in order to bring all this stuff together. All right, so we've now done that. Again, I'm just following the steps on this document that I'm going to give you. All right, so this created a package.json file. Before we look at this, we now want to run a command. This says to go out to the node package manager and install to our project GitHub pages, GH pages, and then hit the enter key. All right, so I'm going to type that or copy that. And in here, I'm going to paste that in npm i gh dash pages all right 
NPM is like a huge grocery store that's got a whole bunch of stuff in it. All right. And all that stuff that's in it, we just went and added to that stuff. We added GH pages. All right. Now, the next thing I want to do, and this will be following the steps, is I want to open up that package.json file. And you'll notice in here, it says we've just added GH pages, GitHub pages. I don't expect a lick in this file to make sense to you. We're going to have to add a line and modify a line, and then we're almost ready to go and see if this works. All right. So we have now gone in and we have done steps one, two, three, four, five, and six. All right. So now we are into step seven open package.json. Verify that GH pages was added. I just showed you that. All right. Then we're going to have to add two lines. Um, let me add them both and then we'll go over exactly what they mean. All right. So this will be under the license line. We will add this. Again, I'm going to go over all of this in just a moment. All right. I think it needs a comma on the end too. All right. That's the first thing. And then the other thing that we need to add in here is this. Right there. Okay, so hold on, give me just a second here. Oops, I didn't want to keep that open. And we're going to replace what's in there with this. Right there. Now, what did we just do? We had we we fixed this line. This says in a couple minutes we're going to attempt to deploy our website out to GitHub pages. So when we run the deploy command, we're telling it that we want to run GitHub pages and the directory that we want to run GitHub pages on is dist. That's where we put all our stuff. All right. The other thing we added was here. The system needs to know what we're working with. And what I mean by that is notice what it says, HTTPS colon slash slash. This has to be your, your GitHub account name, your GitHub account name. My GitHub account name is JP Scott Rankin. So HTTPS colon slash slash JP Scott Rankin, then slash GitHub.io slash ePortfolio. This has to be the name of our folder. OK, so that's everything. So let's save this and let's close that. All right, so now I've done everything through the first seven steps. Notice there's 13 steps. We're now on step eight. We have to add a new file. And we're going to put a couple things in there. OK, all right. So in here. Where we are right now, we're going to add a new file. And there's different ways, of course, that you can come in and do this. All right, probably the easiest way is, you know, we've already got this open in here, right? Or we did. The editor could not be open because the file was not found. That's interesting. All righty. Oh, I know why. That That's fine. All right, let's come in here and let's just add a new file. So a new text document. And that file does not have an extension on it. It is called period or dot get ignore dot get ignore all right and there's nothing in it right now we're going to put in one line of code in there one line all right and that line will say underscore modules that's it and then we'll save it and we'll close it now what that does what that line in there does is it says to the system, it says to the system that what we want is when we push this thing up to GitHub, we don't want it to push that node modules folder. It's big and it's you don't need it because there's other ways you can bring that stuff in. If that confused you, don't let it worry you. All right, it's just something that you're going to do. So. On here, I think we've already done all this, but we can do it again. If if we get messages, you know, we it won't hurt anything. So get add dot get 
commit minus M, and I'm going to say attempting to deploy to GitHub pages. Okay, all right, and I'll do my git push again. So when I get back and I go into GitHub, it'll put us right here. We have just this to go. But when I get back to here now and I look under under GitHub and I refresh this, all right, attempting to deploy to GitHub pages right now. Okay, that all looks good. All right, and you'll notice what's not there. All right, what's not in there is that node modules folder. Okay, all right, so now we have to go to our Git Bash window and run this. Now, before we do that, I want you to see something, and that is when you look here, I've got master, and that's all I've got here is master. Okay, just a master branch. And that's what we've been working with. Yours might say main, and it's totally fine if it does. All right, but I'm going to go back to here, and I want to bring in my last. This is the last thing we'll have to really type in. And I'm going to paste that in here. And that's telling it to run that script that we had in package.json. So npm run deploy. Hopefully I didn't screw anything up. All right, this will take a second, but if it comes back and says published, that's real good. All right, so I'm going to clear here. And now I'm going to refresh this page again. And I'm going to go down to here and I should have a GitHub pages branch. There it is. GH pages. So now if I go to settings. If I go to settings here and I go down a ways, there should be something that says GitHub pages, hopefully. I don't see it, but there should be. I know that I went through this before once, so I'm not worried about it. All right, so let's try it like this. I may have to do it this way. I don't remember. Sorry about that. So let's see, ePortfolios, the repo name, et cetera, et cetera. All right, let's go here and let's go to GH pages. All right, and then settings. I know it's here, all right? I'm not worried about it. All right, so set up templates, position, discussion, gotcha. Got to find where GH Pages is on here. The thing by Traversy is about two or two years old, so things have changed since then. How to find how to find GitHub Pages out on my GitHub account. Hopefully, I can find this. Creating a GitHub Pages site, that should go through most of the same steps. My GitHub page isn't showing up. All right. Browser link is here. Can anybody help me? Or arrows, start working. Yeah, me. Not sure why theme is not required. File called config.yml. And how old is this? Nine years ago, not good. Oh, it published it because it was all there. But I've got to find where GitHub Pages is. Somewhere on here, watch star. Security projects, 
code issues, pull requests. I don't think it'd be under projects, but you never know. Nope. Let'd be here. Uh, transfer ownership, change visibility. It's currently public as it should be. Oh my goodness. Somewhere underneath one of these is GitHub pages. It has to be pages. GitHub pages. Your site is live. <laughs> and there it is. So you should all be able to go out to right here by now. And I'll say site is now live at URL right there. Okay, so we've got everything done. So let's take about 10 minutes or so, 10 to 15 minutes, be done by 930 and let's go over your test. That. And I'm going to close a few of these things because I just don't need them open. All right, so let's go over and find your test. Now, I'm not going to take credit or blame for this test. I didn't write it. I believe that Mr. Smith did before he departed a year ago. All right, so use Bootstrap version 5 to implement all the requirements below. Code is repo bootstrap hot. OK. You will create a three page. Website for a fictional business. This can be anything you want. All right. If your name is Mary, it can be Mary's Pizza, Mary's Market, whatever you want. It can be Mary's Sporting Goods. It can be whatever you'd like it to be. All right. There will be three pages on it, even though the site we just did was one page. We could have easily broken that up into multiple pages. So first you'll have a home page. And as it says, that home page will have a header, a main and a footer. The header will basically have your nav stuff that we used before. I'm not going to read that to you because everything that's in there we just did except for this. And I'll let you look up active class. All that is saying is whatever class is currently active, you'll you'll take that URL, either home or uh, products or whatever, whatever the other one was, and you will make our team, I guess. You will make either home or products or team. You can make you can underline it, you can make it a different color, whatever you want to do to show that it's the home one. Then the main area, as it says there, should have a jumbotron in it. We went over jumbotrons. And it should have three columns of information about the company. So there's the jumbotron and there's the three columns of information. OK. Now include the company name in the tagline. So up here. And the contact information. Let's see. Company name, tagline, and contact information. I'll be in the Jumbotron. Up here, I don't care if you do it like this, where you put your brand and then put this underneath it, or you do it the way we did it and have the brand up here and then off to the right, put in home products and team. I don't care how you do it. Right? Totally up to you. All right. You should use a background image for the Jumbotron. If you say we never did that, well, then look it up. It's not hard. All right, it should be either a light image with dark writing or a darker image with light writing. All right, everything I would I would personally probably use some kind of a muted lighter image. All right, and then write over it with darker text like it's shown here. All right, 
Use a text shadow to make the text in the Jumbotron more readable. Again, you can look that up. Use padding and margin. You saw me do that already. Use the correct semantic tags. So you'll put all the stuff, stuff that are sections into sections and use divs. Include three sections about the company. Can be whatever you choose. Now, because this is a test, you know, I'd, I'd rather have it mean something. All right. Now let's let's assume, for example, let's let's pretend for a second that you're gonna make your name is Max, and you're gonna make Max's meat market where you sell cuts of beef, cuts of chicken, etc. And that's what you want to do. Totally fine. All right. But if I go out here and I look up, for example, I think there's like a meat ipsum. I believe there's one bacon ipsum. All right. So I could use I could go in and I could create five paragraphs with that and you'll notice pork loin meatball spare ribs at least it's something that is sort of related to the topic if you just put in lorem text to me it, it, it doesn't look good so i'd rather have you please don't use lorem text the columns must each be one third on large screens and 100 percent on smaller so once you get off the size whoops i don't want to do that once you get off the size of a large screen these should stack is what it's saying. All right. The footer should contain the copyright line, such as ampersand, and, and don't use that. Really should be ampersand copy is what you'll use for 2023, the company name. Feel free to put in your name if you'd like. Center it using Bootstrap's text facility. Give it a dark background and white text. If you want this to be a background with white text, you can do the same up here if you'd like to or you can make it different if you want to, doesn't really matter. So that's the first page. That is the home page. Next is the products page, products.html. All right, as it says, the header is the same as the home page, but the active class should now not be home anymore. It should be products. All right. Again, has to use a jumbotron about, it's, it says there, the current a current sale. So this could be anything you wanted in here. It doesn't have to say spot like product. You can put whatever you want to put in there. So if it's Max's meat market, maybe you're selling chicken wings this week and you've got a picture of chicken wings and a little bit of text about that. All right. So again, the main area should have a jumbotron and a small selection of products. All right. Use a suitable background image for the Jumbotron. Use text shadowing again, padding and margin, and the correct semantic text, just like we did before. All right, then include information for at least four other products below. So you'll have pictures of four different products. I would recommend using cards as I did. All right, these are going to be the images in here. So it's going to take up a lot of room. Then this would be the title, product one, product two, et cetera. And then you'd have a little bit of a description. And that's exactly what they're saying in here. All right, now it says, lay out the products responsibly, responsibly rather using a bootstrap grid. It must show four items per row on a large screen, two on a smaller screen, and one on the smallest screen. All right, use the boots, bootstrap column classes for implementing this. Implement each product again as a card with all the stuff I mentioned in here. So each product will have an image, a name, a link to view more information, even if it doesn't go anywhere, that's okay, and a short description. The footer should be the same footer as what you had on the home page. Then finally, you've got your team page. <clears throat> This one does not have a jumbotron. Make sure you change the active class to the team page. And this one should have information it says about at least two employees. Let's change that to at least four employees. All right. Lay it out responsively again using a grid. So it looks like this. All right. But then again, when it gets smaller, you'll to just one employee and have them stack one, two, three, four on top of one or after one after the other. 
This is set up very similarly to what you saw before. And again, this is the same. So if you have any questions, I will be online for the rest of the period today. I will be online for the entire period tomorrow. I will be online for the entire period on Friday. Come Monday, all right? So come Monday, we will be going so you have some kind of an idea of what's going on in here. <clears throat> Oops, wrong one. So on Monday, we are no longer going to be using our HTML CSS book. We are instead going to be using the JavaScript book starting Monday. So that's it here, the JavaScript and jQuery fourth edition. I believe I've already mentioned this to you, but chapter one is a repeat. We've already gone over that. OK, so I'm not going to talk about that at all. I'll look through it just to be sure, but I plan on jumping right in. And right into chapter two. All right, the goal is. We are now come Monday we will be at what today is 34, 35. Monday is day 37. All right, so including Monday, we have 42 days out of an 80 day semester, so a little more than half of JavaScript. All right, so that's exactly what we're going to be doing. I don't know how it'll be set up yet. You can probably guess this is like I said off the top of my head. But I'm going to guess here that we'll do probably I'll, we'll, we'll maybe very quickly go through chapter one, but then we'll do two, three and four and probably have a test. Five, six and seven and probably have a test. Eight, and nine and have a test. Ten and eleven and have a test. Twelve through fourteen and have a test. Fifteen and sixteen and have a test. Then we'll go through 17, 18 and 19, but we won't have any tests on that. That's pretty much the way that you can plan the rest of the semester kind of working its way out. All right. So again, I I am responsible now for making sure that you get a copy of this because this had all those steps. All right. I'd like you to try to put this thing under GitHub. Pages, in fact, now what you can do is you can take anything that you've created so far and you can put it under GitHub pages. The reason that that's important is then when you come in and you're actually doing this and you're creating your actual portfolio, all right, now when you come out to here, you can literally go to GitHub pages, all right, and click on that and boom, it'll bring, it'll basically take you to that point in the project. So if you do that and you put in that GitHub pages URL in a new window, boom, it'll open up the entire project for somebody. All right. So again, last time, any questions, jpscott at rankin.edu. Please get a hold of me. All right. I have absolutely no problem in at least attempting to answer any questions that you may have on anything. All right. I had nobody join me in class today, which again is totally fine made it a little tougher because there really wasn't anybody there to uh, ask questions, but that's still, that's totally fine. All right. Okay, so again, Monday, work this week, you know, work, work Thursday, work Friday on your test. If you have questions, email me. Starting Monday of next week, we're jumping right into JavaScript, okay? So if I don't see you or talk to you before then, <clears throat> have a good weekend. I will talk to you on Monday the 6th. See you later.